You know, running a reading series for four years uh, is no joke. So I don't feel like I feel like we should sing Panina and Franklin Park Happy Birthday just to really commemorate the occasion. So I'll get you started, but I want you guys to help me out a little bit. Too. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. My new novel, Fight Song, came out about a week and a half ago, so I'm going to read a short selection from the book. Uh, I'm going to pick it up in the middle of the action, but all you would really need to know is that the main character is a guy named Bob Coffin, uh, and his old lady has recently asked him to vacate the premises, as the kids say. Bob Coffin's first stop is Taco Shed. It's after midnight, and he's never been here so late. He turns into the drive through only one car up in front of him at the intercom. He waits patiently, but two minutes becomes three, becomes five, and let's be honest, five minutes waiting behind one vehicle in a taco shed drive through is unheard of. Especially because Bob is steeped in this particular drive throughs traffic patterns as only a top-notch connoisseur can be. He toots the horn, which gets a whole heap of nothing as a response. He rolls down the window and says, What the fuck are you doing up there? <laughs> another horn toot produces zilch, and Coffin sees nary another option but to do some reconnaissance work. Throw the car in park. Wing open the door. Approach the inexplicably idling vehicle. Bob Coffin sees a guy in the driver's seat, passed out cold, sleeping with a whiskey bottle wedged in his crotch and $20 bills scattered all about. <laughs> but what he hears is a woman's scratchy voice coming from the drive through intercom and saying, Oh, Otis. Otis, I got my panties down at my ankles and I'm ready to be mounted, Otis. Otis, mount me something fierce. So it's safe to say that this stopped Bob Coffin dead in his tracks. And more comes from the scratchy, raw lady voice coming sexy from the intercom. Oh, Otis, I like my men to yank my hair a bit when they come up from behind. Are you going to yank my hair and drive me crazy, Otis, you old fucking goat? <laughs> Bob shakes Otis, who isn't big on answering or moving, but sleeping soundly with some spittle. He shakes him once more for good measure, and the scratchy raw lady voice says, Otis, I'm waiting for your hard taco meat to slide in my wet taco shell. <laughs> Hello? Bob Coffin says to her, who the hell's that? <laughs> I'm a paying customer who's hungry, that's who. <laughs> then her voice pauses and makes some phony computer beeping noises. <laughs> doot, 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 doot. <laughs> and then she says in a robot voice, we are experiencing some technical difficulties with this intercom system. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody, Bob Coffin says. A dramatic exhale from her and then, Otis, you know the fucking rules. You can't bring any friends along. <laughs> Pardon me, Bob says, but I can't order because this drunk is asleep in his car. Not again, she says. Not again? Yeah, yeah, hold up a minute. Bob Coffin looks at Otis. Poor guy grabbing some shut-eye at the drive through intercom. <laughs> Life could be worse, right? At least Bob doesn't binge drink and go dead to the world getting intercom hanky-panky at Taco Shed. <laughs> he says to Otis, it looks like you're going to have to jerk it the old-fashioned way tonight, my friend. Still nothing comes from the narcotized Casanova. And then the back door opens. 
and a woman with gargantuan muscles spilling from her official uniform storms out. Her name tag says Tilda. Bob Coffin has seen this woman many times and is always impressed with her many muscles. She's probably 50 years old and too tanned and Bob Coffin is thankful not to be Otis yanking Tilda's hair and mounting her from behind. <laughs> hey, I know you, Tilda says to Bob. You're here all the time. Well, not all the time. Yeah, yeah, totally. You're the Capitan of Mexican lasagnas. Fuck, I guess I am. Well, Capitan, I'd like to apologize for this strange man that I've never seen before, <laughs> sitting in his car, obviously inebriated. This is an injustice, and on behalf of Taco Shed, I'd like to prepare you a complimentary gourmet meal. <laughs> Tilda puts a muscle paw through Otis's window and gives him a spank on the face very hard. <laughs> Otis stirs and stretches with surprise. Get out of here, you strange stranger. Get out of here before I alert the authorities to your inebriated state of mind. You are a public nuisance, and I'm aghast by this strange stranger's actions. A groggy Otis is sort of confused, but understands enough to make a quick run for it, moving the sloshing whiskey to the passenger seats and driving off. What do you mean you don't know him? I heard you call him by name. Are you a cop? Do I look like a cop? Shit, these days everybody looks like a cop. That's why it's getting so hard to break the law, man. Used to be police were all white guys with crew cuts and cheap shoes. You could spot them a mile away, but these days, wow, I'm gonna need to see some ID. You want to see some ID that says I'm not a cop? Absolutely. Do they make those? They sure as shit should. Then Tilda seems to lose some of her gall. I can't keep up the charade any longer, cop. You got me, cop. I'll sign my confession. I'll waive my rights to a speedy trial. Will you please relax and make me something to eat? I'm not a police officer, I build video games. Bob Coffin thinks that maybe some humor might set Tilda's mind at ease. The Capitan of Mexican lasagnas is no friend of the policia. <laughs> well, that sounds like typical cop behavior. <laughs> Man, your paranoia has paranoia. Well, you gum as much blotter acid as I did, and you live the rest of your life convinced everybody's a cop. I only want one Mexican lasagna. Tilda eyeballs Bob, searching for some sort of tell to indicate whether he's a cop or not, but realizing there's no way to know for certain, she says, how about three Mexican lasagnas? <laughs> that sounds like a deal. Bob Coffin nods, and she says she'll go inside, prep the grub. He walks back to his car and pulls it up to the intercom and says, and also a Coke, please. The beverage will be complimentary as well on account of Taco Shed appreciating your patience with our malfunctioning intercom. <laughs> I'll deliver all of these personally to you out back once it's all ready. And soon, this strange woman opens the back door again, bringing the booty of Mexican lasagnas. She hands Bob his drink. She has one Mexican lasagna for herself. It's a tortilla filled with refried beans, marinara sauce, and processed cheese. Next time you get stoned, try it. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> I'm going to read one other really short uh, scene from the book as well. <laughs> 